Shakespeare and Company is the name of two independent English language bookstores that have existed on Paris's left bank. The first was opened by Sylvia Beach, an American, on the 19th of November 1919 at 8 Rue du Puitron, before moving to larger premises at 12 Rue de Lodion in the 6th arrondissement in 1922. During the 1920s, Beach's shop was a gathering place for many then aspiring writers such as Ezra Pound, Ernest Hemingway, D. Juna Barnes, James Joyce and Ford Maddox Ford. It closed in 1941 during the German occupation of Paris and never reopened. The second bookstore is situated at 37 Rue de la Butcherie, in the 5th arrondissement, and is still in operation today. Opened in 1951 by American George Whitman, it was originally called Le Mistral, but was renamed to Shakespeare and Company in 1964 in tribute to Sylvia Beach's store and on the 400th anniversary of William Shakespeare's birth. Today, it continues to serve as a purveyor of new and second hand books, as an antiquarian bookseller, and as a free reading library open to the public. Additionally, the shop houses aspiring writers and artists in exchange for their helping out around the bookstore. Since the shop opened in 1951, more than 30,000 people have slept in the beds found tucked between bookshelves. The shop's motto, Be not inhospitable to strangers lest they be angels in disguise, is written above the entrance to the reading library. The four Shakespeare and Co. bookstores in New York City, which opened starting in 1981, are not affiliated with the Paris store. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia Beecher's Bookstore. Sylvia Beach, an American expatriate from New Jersey, established Shakespeare and Company in 1919 at 8 Rue du The store functioned as a lending library as well as a bookstore. In 1921, Beach moved it to a larger location at 12 Rue de Lodion, where it remained until 1941. During this period, the store was the center of Anglo American literary culture and modernism in Paris. Writers and artists of the lost generation, such as Ernest Hemingway and F. Scott Fitzgerald, as well as Ezra Pound, Gertrude Stein, George Antheil, D. Juna Barnes, Mina Loy, and Man Ray, among others, spent a great deal of time there. The shop was nicknamed, Stratford on Odeon, by James Joyce, who used it as his office. Its books were considered high quality and reflected Beecher's own taste. The store and its literary denizens are mentioned in Hemingway's A Movable Feast. Patrons could buy or borrow books like D. H. Lawrence's controversial Lady Chatterley's Lover, which had been banned in Britain and the United States. Beach published Joyce's controversial book Ulysses in 1922. It, too, was banned in the United States and Britain. Later editions were also published under the Shakespeare and Company imprint. She also encouraged the publication in 1923, and sold copies of Hemingway's first book, Three Stories and Ten Poems. The original Shakespeare and Company closed in December 1941 during the German occupation of France in World War II. It has been suggested that it may have been ordered shut because Beach denied a German officer the last copy of Joyce's Finnegan's Wake. When the war ended, Hemingway personally liberated the store, but it never reopened. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> George Whitman's bookstore. In 1951, a new English-language bookstore was opened on Paris's left bank by American ex-serviceman George Whitman under the name of Le Mistral. Its premises, the site of a 16th-century monastery, are at 37 Rue de la Butcherie, near Place Saint-Michel, just steps from the Seine, Notre-Dame and the Isle de la Cite. Much like Sylvia Beecher's Shakespeare and Company, Whitman's store quickly became the focal point of literary culture in Bohemian Paris. 
Early habitués included writers of the Beat Generation Allen Ginsberg, Gregory Corso, and William S. Burroughs, who is said to have researched sections of Naked Lunch in the medical section of the bookstore's library. Other visitors were James Baldwin, Ana Nin, Julio Cortazar, Richard Wright, Lawrence Durrell, Max Ernest, Bertolt Brecht, William Saroyan, Terry Southern, and editors of the Paris Review, such as George Plimpton, Peter Mathieson, and Robert Silvers. George Whitman had modeled his shop after Sylvia Beecher's. In 1958, while dining with Whitman at a party for James Jones who had newly arrived in Paris, Beach announced that she was handing the name to him for his bookshop. In 1964, after Sylvia Beecher's death and on the 400th anniversary of William Shakespeare's birth, Whitman renamed his store, Shakespeare and Company, which is, as he described it, a novel in three words. Whitman called his venture, a socialist utopia masquerading as a bookstore. Henry Miller called it, a wonderland of books. The shop has beds tucked among the shelves of books where aspiring writers are invited to sleep for free in exchange for helping around the bookshop, agreeing to read a book a day, and writing a one-page autobiography for the shop's archives. These guests are called, tumbleweeds. After the rootless plants that blow in and out on the winds of chance, as Whitman described, an estimated 30,000 people have stayed at the shop since it opened in 1951. Several literary publications have had their editorial address at the bookstore, including the avant-garde journal Merlin, which is credited for having discovered Samuel Beckett, it being the first to publish him in English. Among the journal's editors were Richard Seaver, Christopher Logue, and Alexander Trocchi. Jane Luget was the publisher. From 1959 to 1964, Jean Fanchette published two cities from the bookshop. The journal's patrons included Anne Nin and Lawrence Durrell, and it published, among others, Ted Hughes and Octavio Paz. From 1978 to 1981, a group of American and Canadian expatriates ran a literary journal out of the upstairs library, called Paris Voices. The journal published young writers such as Welsh poet Tony Curtis and Irish playwright and novelist Sebastian Barry. The editor-in-chief was Kenneth R. Timmerman and the editorial team included Canadian Antanas Sileika. Other publications established from the bookstore include Frank Magazine, edited by David Applefield with contributions from writers such as Mavis Gallant and John Berger, and Whitman's own The Paris Magazine, or The Poor Man's Paris Review, as he called it, with contributors including Lawrence Ferling Hetty, Jean-Paul Sartre, Marguerite Duras, Pablo Neruda, and in a more recent edition Luke Sonte, Michel Huellebeck, and Rivka Galchin. The first issue debuted in 1967, the most recent in 2010. George Whitman was awarded the Officier de l'Ordre des Arts et des Lettres in 2006, one of France's highest cultural honor. He died at the age of 98 on 14 December 2011 in his apartment above the bookstore. Whitman's only child, Sylvia Whitman, named after Sylvia Beach, began helping her father with management of the bookstore in 2003. She now runs the shop with her partner, David Delanet, in the same manner as her father did. Regular activities are a Sunday tea party, writers' workshops, and weekly events that have included writers such as Dave Eggers, A. M. Holmes, Jonathan Safran Four, and Naomi Klein. In 2003, Sylvia Whitman founded Festival Anco, a literary festival that was held biennially at the park next door to the bookstore, Square Rene Viviani. Participants included Paul Auster, Siri Husavet, Jeanette Winterson, Jung Chang, and Marjane Satrapi. In 2010, the bookstore launched the Paris Literary Prize for Unpublished Novellas, with a top prize of €10,000 provided by the De Groot Foundation. The winner of the first contest was Rosa Rankin G., whose entry, The Last Kings of Sark, was subsequently published by Virago. 
The winner of the second prize was C. E. Smith. His entry, Body Electric, was co published by the Bookstore and the White Review. Partnering with Bob's Bake Shop, Shakespeare and Company opened a cafe in 2015, located next door to the shop in what had been, since 1981, an abandoned garage. The cafe serves primarily vegetarian food, with vegan and gluten free options. George Whitman had been trying to open a literary café in the same space since as early as 1969. In 2016, the bookstore published its own history in a book titled Shakespeare and Company, Paris, A History of the Rag and Bone Shop of the Heart, edited by Krista Halverson with a foreword by Jeanette Winterson and an epilogue by Sylvia Whitman. Other contributors to the book include Ethan Hawke, Lawrence Ferling Hetty, Allen Ginsberg, Anae Nin, Robert Stone, Ian Rankin, Kate Tempest, and Jim Morrison. The book features an illustrated adaptation of Sylvia Beecher's memoirs. It also includes a selection of George Whitman's letters and journals written along his hobo adventures during the Great Depression. The kindness he received from strangers along the way inspired the founding ethos of the bookstore, Give what you can, take what you need. The bookstore was a sanctuary for some 20 of its customers during the November 2015 Paris attacks. Topic in popular culture Shakespeare and Company features in Richard Linklater's film Before Sunset, Nora Ephron's Julie and Julia, and in Woody Allen's Midnight in Paris, the store and the owner George Whitman were the subject of Portrait of a Bookstore as an Old Man, a 2003 documentary film directed by Benjamin Southerl and Gonzag Picklin. Shakespeare and Company is showcased in the Hong Kong TVB drama Triumph in the Skies 2 when characters rock and my Oli Wu are reading and sleeping in the store. Topic. See also. Books portal. Paris portal.